Welcome to two projects. In this video, we are going to explain the project recurrent neural networks based NLP RNN model for offensive language detection in Twitter texts. Before diving into the execution, let me give you an overview of the project. So the project aims to tackle the issue of offensive language on social media platforms like Twitter which can lead to cyberbullying, harassment, and toxicity. Traditional methods for detecting offensive language often lack nuanced context, and there is a need for advanced techniques like deep learning and neural networks. Recurrent neural networks, that is RNNs, have shown promise in understanding sequential data, making them suitable for tasks like offensive language detection, due to their ability to understand natural language. So we will be building variants of RNNs for detecting offensive language. So the project analyzes Twitter offensive language samples, processes the data, tokenizes the data, and feds it into RNN models. Different RNN models are built, including simple RNN, LSTM, and combinations like LSTM plus GRU to learn patterns and nuances of offensive language. The best performing model is selected. And the model is integrated with the web application using Flask framework, implementing user authentication functionalities, users input text through a web interface, which undergoes pre-processing similar to the training data. And the final prediction outcome is displayed through the front end of the web application, providing users with insights into offensive language presence. So the project's objectives are to develop an automated tool for Twitter text offensive language detection, enhance user experience with an intuitive interface, and mitigate toxic language and online behavior to promote healthier online environments that benefit educators, content moderation teams, social media platforms, and online safety. So this is what we'll be doing in this project. Now we'll look at the software and hardware requirements to execute this project. Hardware requirements are operating system of Windows, processor of i5 and above, RAM of 8 GB and above, and hard disk of 25 GB and above. Software requirements are application needed is Anaconda. Primary language required is Python. Front-end framework needed is Flask. Back-end framework needed is Jupyter Notebook. Database required is SQLite 3. And front-end technologies required are HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap 4. Now we'll look at the algorithms built. So as I mentioned earlier, these are the algorithms built. So in the base paper, author has proposed to compare simple RNN and LSTM. For improved performance, we have proposed LSTM plus GRU in this project. So we have trained all these models. We have compared their performance using different performance metrics like accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. And we have observed that the proposed model, the combination of LSTM and GRU, has outperformed simple RNN and LSTM models. So we have deployed LSTM plus GRU into the Flask web application. We will be executing the project using Flask web application. So before execution, first we need to open the code folder which contains the project source code files. So this is the code folder and these are the contents I have in the code folder. This is static folder which consists of files related to CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap. This is templates folder. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc., which represent different pages of the website. This is app.py file. This .py file contains the information related to front-end logic. It includes code in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database, and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML templates. This is labeled data CSV file in which I have required offensive text data. So the dataset contains annotations from Crowdflower users. 
indicating the presence of hate speech offensive language or neither in tweets so the data includes the number of users who coded each tweet the number of users who judged the tweet into hate speech offensive language or neither classes and the majority class label and the actual text content of the tweets so these are the columns i have in the data set so on this data set we'll be training the deep learning models and these are model files which contain algorithm information these files will be loaded into the project code during runtime to utilize the train models this is sample csv file in which i have test cases on which we'll make the predictions this is notebook jupyter source file which contains a combination of code graphs and outputs all in one place so jupyter notebook allows users to write and execute code in individual cells making it a popular choice for data science and this is signup.db file this file is the database file used to store user information it stores information like user sign up details so this is about the code folder now copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer this is the path i'm copying it open anaconda prompt use the command cd followed by a space and paste the copied path of the code folder and hit the enter button so this command is used to change the current directory to the code folder's path now compile the app.py file using the command python space app.py i am typing python space app.py and hit the enter button so this command executes the python script and performs a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues after running the app.py file the flask framework will host the application locally at the default address local host and port unless configured differently now copy the local link provided by the framework i'm copying it and paste it into any web browser i usually prefer chrome after pasting it hit the enter button so the home page of the project has been displayed in the browser this is the front end built using flask framework here we can see a register link click on it so if we are new users we have to register ourselves first fill in all these details and click on register button to sign up if we already have account we can directly log in by clicking on this link as i am already a member i am clicking on the sign in link here we have to give our credentials username and password i'm giving mine and click on login button so it has redirected us to the classifications page so here we can see a text box where we have to enter a text and the application will classify whether the text belongs to hate speech offensive language or neither of them now we'll enter the text i have entered this text now click on predict button i have took it from the sample file which i have shown before in the code folder it will take some time to load so here we can see the result that is the content is hate speech the application has classified the given text as a hate speech we'll try again click on home link we'll try giving another text i have entered this text now click on predict button here we can see the classification the content is hate speech again click on home link we'll try giving some more test cases i have entered this text click on predict button it will take some time to load here we can see the result for the entered text so the text has been classified as the content is offensive speech so the application has classified the given text 
into offensive speech. Click on home link. This is the text I have entered this time. Now click on predict button. Here we can see the result for the given text. That is the content is neither offensive or hate speech. So the given text is neither offensive or hate speech. We'll try again, click on home link. We'll try with this text, click on predict button. It will take some time to load. Here we can see the result for the given text. The content is neither offensive or hate speech again. Click on home, enter the text. This is the text I have entered. Click on predict button. Here we can see the result for the given text. The content is offensive speech. So the application has classified the given content as offensive speech. We'll try with one last message. This is the message I have entered. Click on predict button. It would take some time to load. Please wait. We can see the result here, the classification that is the content is offensive speech again. So the application has classified the given message as a offensive speech. Click on home. In this way, we have to enter the message and the application will classify whether it is a hate speech, offensive speech or neither of them. I have entered this message. Now click on predict button. Here we can see the classification that is the content is a hate speech. Now we we'll look at the graphs plotted. Click on the about link here. Here we can view all the visualizations made. So this is sample outcome graph which displays the distribution of labels. So in this graph on x-axis, I have class labels and on y-axis, I have their counts. So we can see in the data, there are more number of cases of class one. One indicates offensive comments. And this is accuracy curve of LSTM plus GRU graph. So in this graph on x-axis, I have epochs and on y-axis, I have accuracy. We can see for every increasing epoch, accuracy is increasing for both train and test data. That means the model is doing well. This is accuracy scores comparison graph, a horizontal bar graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have accuracy scores. And on y-axis, I have algorithm names. So these are the algorithms built. Accuracy is a measure of how well a model correctly predicts outcomes. It represents the proportion of correctly classified instances among all instances evaluated. Coming to F1 score, F1 score combines precision and recall into a single value. It provides a balance between precision and recall, taking into account both false positives and false negatives. This is precision scores comparison graph. Precision is a measure of the correctness of positive predictions made by a classifier. And recall is a measure of the classifier's ability to correctly identify all relevant instances from a data set. So from all these graphs, we can see that LSTM plus GRU has outperformed the other models in all the performance metrics. So these are the graphs plotted. Now click on logout. So the project's RNN-based model effectively detects offensive language in Twitter data, aiding in online content moderation. Integrated into a user-friendly web app, it offers accessible tools to combat online toxicity, benefiting social media platforms, content moderation teams, 
educators and users concerned about fostering healthier online environments. Thank you for watching video. For more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in. For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.